listening to our service. People in New Zealand, Christine, who's a friend of ours, who's actually been to the church. It amazes me the modern technology. Absolutely amazing. I need to share that the that the portion of this message I've gained from many sources, as well as my own personal observation and study. I feel led that tonight I have to share. I need to share with you about the power of God. Amen. Because it's a bit heavy. I don't mean the message, I mean what's been laid upon me is a bit heavy. I feel that God has laid upon me that I've got to get the fellowship ready to a place of readiness for what God is about to do. Um, and that's not a little thing. God wants us to be prepared and ready for what he's about to bring into being. And can I stress straight away, size has nothing to do with it. Size has got nothing to do with God's ability. He can, and he normally does, take the small things and make them great. Amen. He took a nation that was in slavery and he made it his chosen people. He used Gideon and he used his own words a total nobody and made him into a great leader. He took 120 scared, frightened believers and made them into a church that now covers the world. And he took a babe, born in a major, and made him into the saviour of the world. So, get your eyes off how things are now at the present and start believing in what is to come. I've got a picture within me where I see Trinity being just like that first group of disciples and believers meeting together when the Spirit of God came upon them in that upper room. Then, and only then, were they ready to become a church and to do the works of God. Amen. And please, I'm not talking about nice or good works that the majority of the Western church has been restricted to. I'm talking about works of power that God will bring about. I'm in Luke 5. If you'd like to open your Bible. I'm starting at verse 17. One day, Jesus was teaching, and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk but i want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins so he said to the paralyzed man 
I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. What I've got growing in my spirit is Trinity is going to be used very much like these four men who brought the man to Jesus. In that we're going to be God's agents who carry his power to the nation. Yeah. And that frightens me to death. <laughs> we can gain something from the very opening words. One day. Did you know that when you walk with the Lord and you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, every day is a special day? Amen. Amen. The very presence of God makes it special. I'll let you into a truth. We don't have to go out and rush around trying to make and open opportunities to share God. That's the way of the flesh. When we're in the Spirit and allowing His power to flow, He makes and opens up situations for us to reveal Jesus. Yeah. If you read the book of Acts, all the way through it, the Spirit gave opportunities to reveal Jesus. Peter and John were on the way to the temple and they healed a beggar. Then they were able to witness to the crowd. Philip went down into Samaria. Great signs and wonders followed. And it ended up with the apostles having to go and help out. Then Philip went and witnessed to the Ethiopian as he was traveling in his chariot. Ended up with him being baptized and taking Jesus back to Ethiopia. Everywhere that Paul went, the Spirit opened up opportunities for him to witness. So I say again, one day, because they're all special, and my inner feeling is, we are getting ever closer, ever closer to the breakout of God amongst us in His power. Hallelujah. Notice what that Jesus was teaching. So let's learn. We can get so caught up in what we're doing that we can actually miss what the Spirit wants us to do. We can get so wrapped up in our own ideas and situation that we can actually miss what the Spirit is saying and leading. It's like this. I've come to Bible study. I've prepared for it. So this is what's going to happen. Or I come to a church service I've planned and I've arranged it and this is the way it will go. And no matter what the Spirit tries to do or bring about, we've set our boundaries. And we're not going to step over that. Part of it is that we're frightened of offending people. We're also terrified of getting it wrong in front of others and of course we've got to protect our egos. Probably one of the biggest difficulties is that we're not available to God all the time. Many only have set times for church. I go to church on such and such a day, period. I discovered that the closer I get to the Spirit, the more I want to go to church. Amen. The more I want to be with God's people. Yeah. And it also works the other way. When I'm not right spiritually, I don't want to be in church and I don't want you lot around me. <laughs> church, we have set up so many boundaries. And in doing that, we've set up a lot of no-go areas in our lives which the Spirit is unable to touch. Remember, God will not force. He waits for us to surrender to his will. Jesus was teaching. 
But that did not stop him from doing what the Spirit wanted. Ask yourself, I don't want to know, this is for your own sake, have I got any no-go areas in my life? Only you will know that. Have I got any no-go areas in my life? And then we come to the, the thing where the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were present. These were the people who hated Jesus. They were forever trying to put him down. And they were there. And guess what? Jesus just carried on as normal. Mm. Amen? Amen? Give my love to them all, Jay. He didn't try to stop them from coming to the meeting or entering the meeting. This showed the level of confidence that we have to attain to. That despite who comes in or who's present, we just carry on as normal. We don't adapt. We don't change our plans to accommodate the people. And by the way, he didn't have one or two in opposition. They traveled from far and wide to listen. When I first became a preacher, I used to choose my words with great care because I didn't want to offend anyone. <laughs> oh, I can't say this, it might offend so and so. And I know that she's vulnerable in that area, so I can't say that. And I mustn't speak too long because it will upset <laughs> so and so. And that ended up with me preaching a watered down word. My wife told me off, and I always do what she tells me. Yeah. She told me off, and following one service, yeah. she said, don't do that anymore, preach it as you receive it. Yeah, say so that's what I've done ever since. Yeah. How confident, church, are you in what you're doing for the Lord? Possibly one of the most important verses in this passage is this. The power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Now that verse has been put in the word for a deliberate reason. Remember this, and we've, had, we've heard this before. Many would say, oh, he's the son of God. He can do this, he can do that. He couldn't do it without the power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit had to be present. Are you agreeing with that? Because Jesus came just like you and I. He took the form of flesh. He laid down everything else. Simply this, and I want to share this with you. The power is not always present. We can only minister in the Spirit when the Holy Spirit is willing. Yeah. And by that I mean that His gifts and His power are present to minister. The Spirit is not something that we can turn on and off like a tap. Those who minister must be aware of the Spirit's desire. We must be led by the Spirit. And again, I was share about me in my earlier days. I simply lacked wisdom in this area. And I thought I could lay hands on people whenever I felt like it, and there were going to be results. One soon learns when one ends up literally pleading with the Spirit, but no results. The Spirit is in charge. And that's why I wait to see if the Spirit is weak, willing in meetings. And the other point to notice is that the power was present to heal. On other occasions, power may be present to save, power may be present to do miracles. It varies according to what the Spirit wants to do. It's the Spirit who decides how we will manifest. And if you have to minister and the anointing is not flowing, then I suggest that you stand on your faith. Your faith is a part of you. It's ever-present. 
If you stand on the teaching of James, that the prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective, James 5.16, then you can always minister in faith. Now this, I, I come to the other verse now. Men came carrying a paralytic on a mat. Church, Trinity in particular, this is the unity that the church requires. Working together to get people to Jesus. Please notice their names are not listed. In the modern church, there would have been a great upset because they didn't get a personal mention in the notices or their names weren't in the newsletter. Sadly, there's a spirit called look at me at work in the church. How often have I as a pastor heard someone saying angry words such, I'm just taken for granted. Nobody appreciates me. And there are others who always want their ministries to be acknowledged. It depends whether you want recognition down here That's right. or in heaven. Oh, yes. That's right. A true sign of humility, which comes out of a genuine love, is being able to stay in the background. The secret of a successful ministry is being involved but not getting in the way. To be used but not to use. We must be careful that we do not push ourselves continually into the limelight. The danger is we're trying to upstage the Holy Spirit. There's only one that we must keep set the stage and his name is Jesus. All right. Notice that Jesus was in a house. He wasn't in the synagogue. You and I have got to be prepared and willing to minister wherever the Spirit decides. Whether it be on a seashore, a grassy hillside, or in someone's house. Wherever the Spirit leads us. But I do love these guys for their initiative. Who would think of going up and destroying a roof? <laughs> Vandals. <laughs> I know where she gets that from. We went to Trebekah once and studied this passage and we did um, a playlet and one of them was the house owner and he, he was ranting and raving about the Vandals who destroyed his roof. I know where that comes from. <laughs> What determination. Please don't get upset if I say it. I would love a church full of people with this determination. Yeah. I tell you there would be a continual buzz about the place. Let's get it done. No matter what the cost, let's go for it. Sadly, we can be put off by just a little thing. And believe me, the enemy knows what to lay in our path so that we lose our determination. I believe the Lord enjoys his children challenging him, standing on their faith. I believe that God gets quite excited. These men put the cripple right in front of Jesus. There was no way that he could miss seeing him. And I get... The other story that comes to my mind is of the Syrian Phoenician woman. Yes, the now there's a lady, she had a need, and she was willing to confront Jesus with it. Twelve men tried to stop her and she just brushed them aside. Get out of the way. I want to see Jesus. And even Jesus tried to put her off in some way. He was <coughs> testing her. But she was determined. She had a boldness of faith that she wanted an answer. How many of you want an answer? Are you willing to press in and push it then? You see, it was love that drew and pushed these men. 
and that woman to go and confront Jesus with their demands. I believe the Lord likes to be challenged by faith. I, th I think he loves to find faith. Church, we must not allow our faith to be turned aside or deterred by anything. We've got to press in and take hold of that which we desire. And then we're told that Jesus saw their faith. Let me try to explain. Are you aware that a writer will always recognize their writing? An artist will always recognize their painting? A craftsman will always recognize their own work. And Jesus, the author of faith, recognizes real faith straight away. And when these men appeared in front of Jesus, he saw and recognized that which had brought them. You and I have got to learn to distinguish faith. Whenever the opportunity comes, we must try to build up faith. Even to the point that we may have to lovingly nurture it until it blooms. Never ever be found guilty of crushing faith. Faith is such a precious quality. And as a church, it's our responsibility to bring weak faith into strong faith. Little faith may behave in ways that are not our ways. So it will take a lot of grace to walk beside and to continually love that person. And then Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Now I may offend one or two when I say it's all to do with sin. And some will say I haven't sinned. <laughs> be careful, you might be declaring yourself perfect. And I don't see one perfect around you. It is sin that gets in the way of the power of God. For the power of God to flow through us, we've got to get rid of all the barriers and all the things that get in the way. And some sin is so is buried so deep that we have forgotten about it. But it's still there. We need the light of the Holy Spirit to illuminate. Even a wrong attitude can be sinful. An attitude full of control and bitterness and anger and jealousy will immediately separate you from God and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I have shared, and many agree, that I'm not a nice person. You don't need to <laughs> say anything. You see, I know what's inside of me. And I'm continually reminded that I need to live in an ongoing life of repentance. Yeah. Don't get into the self-righteousness, that's dangerous, when we begin to think so highly of ourselves. Be humble, spend time on your knees seeking God's forgiveness. Mm. Know that God is quick to forgive those who come with a repentant spirit. Mm -hmm. And in passing, don't be put off by the murmurings and the mutterings of others. Set your mind on God and listen to the Spirit. Do you mind if I take you just a little bit deeper tonight? No. Something you need to get over or take down into your spirit. Jesus is always the I am in our lives. Whatever the situation he is the I am in that situation. To those who walk in darkness, and I'm quoting John 8, he said, I am the light of the world. To those who were hungry, John 6, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die, John 11. 
He is not the I was, nor I'm going to be, or I will be. But he is the I am in our lives. And I believe that Jesus wants to stretch our faith. Please, church, never think of Jesus in the past tense. That is to have your eyes on the historical Christ. Jesus is, and he comes to us to address present needs. He can bring life to the dead right here and now. Amen. And he can bring hope in a hopeless situation right here and now. Amen. He can bring joy to the morning right here and now. And he is and will always be the I am in our situation. Amen. Jesus says, now let me stop a moment. If we feel that Jesus is not doing what we expect him to do, let me tell you something. It's because he has chosen not to do it. Sometimes God's answer is no. Yes. Because Jesus is never late. And he's not confined just to make things right only at this, some point in the future. Nothing limits him. Yeah. And sometimes we feel that God will work when the situation is better or when I get my act together. God will do it when he wants to do Amen. it. We need to know that Jesus can intervene and change a situation completely. In Mark 9, Jesus makes an amazing statement. This is the man, the father of the epileptic, if you remember, who was pleading with Jesus. And Jesus turned to him and said, everything is possible for him who believes. What a statement. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? So easy. How many of you believe he can do it? Yeah. Whatever your problem, whatever your situation, how many of you actually believe that he is the answer? Yeah. You see, belief is such an odd word. It's abstract, it's unseen, and there's no action. Yet it's the key to seeing life in death, seeing light in darkness, seeing hope in despair and experiencing joy and sorrow yeah. and the key is faith yeah. it's faith that unlocks it faith is so important in our relationship with god if you read the story of gideon's struggle he struggled to trust god's word in judges if you read it he wanted signs the Pharisee and the scribes wanted signs. Actually, there's never going to be enough proof where there's no faith, if that makes sense to you. If you haven't got faith, there's never ever going to be enough signs. In, even if an angel was standing before you, you can still doubt God. God operates in response to faith. How many of you believe that? Yeah. It sounds so simple, yet it's crucial. And Jesus' final words to his disciples in John 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Do we really trust him? Yeah. We've got to have faith. But sometimes things just don't happen the way we expect it, or the way we planned it. There are times when I too question the wisdom of God in his ways. Why did you allow this to happen? Why couldn't you do it earlier? <clears throat> Sometimes it feels as though God has let us down. Because God doesn't always respond in the way we expect. We're too caught up in our own ways yeah. and our own time. Such expectation causes us to misread 
God's good intention. Now listen, if wrong expectations can cause misunderstanding and quarrel among friends, then can you see how a wrong expectation of God's ways can cause us to misunderstand him and doubt his goodness? Friends, do we believe in Jesus? Well, I heard about four people. I'll ask that again. <laughs> Friends, do we believe in Jesus? Yes. He's alive Hallelujah. and he's with us today. That's why we're called believers. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Would you say you're a believer? Yes. yes. There's time you started living up to your name then, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Jesus wants for you and I to believe that he can do something in our situation. It's one thing to know that Jesus is God. It's quite another thing to trust him when you're in the middle of a difficult situation. Yeah, that's right. Can we believe he will make a way when there seems to be no way? Can we believe that he can work wonders and bring hope in hopeless situations. Yes. Church, can you believe that he will provide the power when it's needed for you to minister and to witness? Yes. Because that's where they've got to get this church. They've got to get to that place where they're ready to minister. Because God is on the verge of breaking out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, people. Time, church. Don't delay, get yourself sorted. Don't keep putting it off. Now is the time to get ready.